Um, <laughs> next up, we have Amy Chapman. Come on up, Amy. She will be sharing a story with us today about, about her camp. Okay. Um, this is my mom's shirt. I got it out of the closet at camp this morning where it's probably been hanging for 60 years. It smells a little like mothballs, a little like mouse poop, a little like pine boards, and it's pretty much the best smell in the world. So mine's not an adventure story. Mine's an origin story. So every one of us has an origin story. If you're a comic book superhero, your origin story is the story of how you got your superpowers. Maybe you escaped in the nick of time from an exploding planet, or you got bitten by a radioactive spider. If you're a mere mortal like the rest of us, your origin story is the story of the people, places, and events that shaped your life and made you who you are. This is my origin story. In 1954, my parents bought a lakefront lot on North Pond in Woodstock, Maine. They paid $200. And the next summer, they came back with their four kids, ages 5 to 11, and they cleared and leveled a building site, and they started to build what my family has always called camp. <laughs> it was never meant to be a cottage or a lake house. We weren't that fancy. It was just camp with exposed rafters and tiny little bedrooms and an open loft that was always full of the lumpiest beds in the world. <laughs> My father had grown up here in Bethel, just a few miles away, and he was an avid outdoorsman. He was a scout leader, a hiker, a rock hound, and he always knew that his exile in Connecticut and then later New Jersey was only temporary. Like a lot of Mainers in the 1930s and 1940s, my dad had left home after college to seek his fortune and that exile was the price he paid to profit from his University of Maine metallurgical engineering degree. But every summer, my mother and the kids were installed at camp as soon as school got out. My father would drive up from New Jersey every weekend and for his annual vacation and spend the summers there. It was always understood that when he retired, they would spend their summers on the lake and their winters on a house that they would buy or build on a hill in Bethel. That was the plan. Then in 1958, my father had a heart attack. My mother remembered that when he came home from work that day and went directly to bed, it was the first time she had ever known him to be ill. <clears throat> a little while later, he called her upstairs. When I got there, she told me once, he just died. My mother was 38 years old. She had four grief-stricken kids, now ages 8 to 14. And when the funeral was over, she put them in the station wagon with the family dog, and they drove from New Jersey to Maine to spend the summer because, she said, it was what we had planned, and I couldn't think of anything else to do. Sometimes I sit on the deck at camp, and I look out at North Pond, and I wonder how on earth my mother ever had the strength to come there that summer. To throw open the windows, and air out the mattresses, and sweep away the mouse poops. And just keep getting up in the morning, let alone the strength to feed and nurture her four kids, and over the next few summers to supervise the completion of the camp, which will never really be finished. <laughs> but she did. Uh, by midsummer, my mother began to suspect something. And by the end of the summer, she knew she was pregnant. I was born early the following March, and in June that year, the family came to camp to spend the summer, just like always. My mother laid a blanket on the big oak table in front of the window, laid me on it on my stomach so I could raise my head and look out the window at, the, at North Pond. I was three and a half, four months old. It was my first summer at camp. This summer is my 60th, and I haven't ever missed one. 
My brother Steve likes to say that I wasn't born in Maine, but I got here as soon as I could. <laughs> <laughs> Connecticut, where my family moved later that year, was where we went to school, and later my mother got a job there as a school librarian. We had friends in Connecticut, and all the usual growing up things happened in Connecticut. But we all knew that our real lives happened at camp. Every June, when we would pull off of Route 26 and onto the dirt road that led the last mile to camp, we'd have to throw open the door of the station wagon and let our Cocker Spaniel, Lucky, jump out and run the last mile beside the car. If we didn't, he would claw our legs bloody trying to jump out the window. <laughs> and you know what? If it would have gotten us there a moment sooner, we would all have jumped out and run right along with him. My mom spent 50 summers at camp, and in 50 years, there was never a summer morning that she didn't wake up, look out the window, and see if the lake was steaming or choppy or smooth. And if there was no wind stirring the surface, she would tell people, when I got up this morning, the lake was just like glass. <laughs> she would hold both hands out in front of her flat, palms down and say it for 50 years, always with the same hint of awe in her voice, just like glass. 